Hey, hey everybody, hope you're doing all right today. Let's take a look at market failure. This video is designed just to give you a brief overview and a little introduction to what it means. Market failure is maybe one of the more complex microeconomic concepts to get your brain around, mainly because it takes something that <clears throat> had been very clear to you, like a, the, the, the most efficient allocation of resources in the free market, and then we learn about how ways in which it doesn't actually happen, or these, there are these extra costs or benefits of production and consumption, and there's just a lot of newness uh, to market failure. So just trust yourself. You're going to get it. It's not... In the end, it all kind of comes clean, but let's just start with a general introduction. So what is market failure? Market failure is when the market, the free market, fails to optimize the allocation of resources. So if you remember, there's a video back there. And if you haven't seen it, you should take a look or look in your textbook about the allocative efficiency, market and allocative efficiency. It's important that you remember those concepts in, before you move on. Because if you don't understand how the free market uh, optimizes uh, the way in which it allocates resources in the marketplace, then you're not going to understand how it fails. Um, it's sort of like the first step. And the second step is when with certain products, the production of certain things or the consumption of certain products actually messes with that efficient allocation of resources. So basically make sure you, you have that before you go on. Like, don't, like, Stop this video and go back and make sure you're clear on it. So market failure is basically when either there's too much of a good is being produced or too little of a good is produced by the free market. Okay, So the solution then is always, solutions to these things are almost always the government. Just like if there's a crisis in a house, who's going to fix it? Well, the parents need to fix it. Parents fix problems in households. Governments are the ones where everybody looks to to fix problems in a macroeconomic sense or in a household that would be as big as a country. So this parent, government, parent in a house and government in a country analogy is really useful to you. So what are they going to do? Well, they're going to either decide to provide the public goods themselves, national defense, flood barriers, roads, street lighting, street lighting, lightning, street lighting, etc. Or they're going to subsidize private firms um, covering all the costs to provide them. So the government gets involved to try to either solve the market failure, which they usually don't totally do, but at least um, uh, el eliminate some of the misallocation of resources. Some examples of market failure, and I'm going to give you some, some just general uh, vocabulary words that you need to know to build your discourse for economics. But examples of market failure are negative externalities of both production and consumption, so these are bad things that happen beyond what the market, beyond what is represented in the market in either the production of certain things, pollution from a factory, or consumption of a certain things, like the smoking of a cigarette. The consumption of a cigarette causes these negative externalities to anyone else. And if you have ever sat across the table from someone smoking, you know what a negative externality is. It's that secondhand smoke that comes over and pollutes your lungs and actually decreases your health as a result of someone else smoking. You're just sitting there trying to have a conversation and yet your lungs are being produced, are being polluted. Well, that is a negative externality of production. If uh, I live in Santiago, Chile, and unfortunately we have a, a horrible smog situation here, that is a negative externality of what? Of production. Of production, it's created by the driving of cars. Well, that's consumption. But the production of, say, um, uh, there's a huge paint factory here, um, and that causes a negative externality of production. The opposite is also true. There are positive externalities of production and consumption, and we'll talk about what those are a little bit later. But these are good things that come from the production of something or good things that come from the consumption of something, right? These are externalities. These are good things that happen to other people or to a third party. A third uh, example of market failure is the lack of, of public goods. And the fourth is common access resources, so hold on to those ideas. I'm going to give you some definitions. And as you go through uh, your, your understanding of market failure, these things will become more clear. Okay, so key terms to know. You got to know these. This is just basic stuff. You got to know the discourse. You got to know the language. Economics is like learning a second, third, fourth language for you. So externalities. An externality exists anytime the production or the consumption of a good creates spillover benefits 
or costs to a third party not involved in the market. So if someone's smoking a cigarette and blowing the smoke in your face, right? You are a third party. That's a spillover cost to you, right? Positive externalities, or you could call them merit goods, are resources. These are resources that will be under allocated, right, for the for a production of a good. So examples of that: college education, healthcare. If I'm healthy, right, and I am um, the, the healthier I am, the less likely I am to make someone else sick, right? Or the more healthy I am, or the more highly educated I am, the more likely I am going to be a productive member of society. So those are positive externalities, and they're called merit goods. Negative externalities, externalities are called demerit goods, and these resources will be over-allocated for the production of a good. So examples of that, polluting factories and smoking. And then the last term that I wanted you to, to put in your brain here was common access resources. And common access resources are typically natural resources such as fishing grounds, forests and pastures, or human-made systems for managing natural resources such as irrigation, irrigation systems. Okay, these are things that we all have access to. They're common access. And we'll talk more about these in, in future videos. So I hope that provides you with a general idea of what market failure is so that you can start to get your brain around what it is when the market fails um, because the whole idea of market failure is a big topic. Um, it's actually really fascinating and interesting and it really does change the way you look at things when uh, you walk around and that's the beautiful part of economics. Okay, so I hope you found this video to be helpful and I would suggest you continue on if you're, this is making sense to you, continue on with the next in the series. All right, talk to you in a bit.